Hi, everybody. I have had a couple of individuals contact me in the past couple of weeks to answer this question, caregiving, how to get out of an abusive relationship. And this may not be what you think. So this video responds to people who need care from their caregivers or family members, but who are physically or emotionally abused or neglected. These are usually care receivers who are dependent on their caregiver for a place to live, for money, caregivers who may feel isolated, may be physically threatened, emotionally abused, and who feel like they really don't know what to do, that they're stuck in a situation that they can't get out of. So if you are a person who relies on care from other people, and you feel that you are in an abused relationship, stay with me because I'm gonna give examples of how this happens and actions that you can take. On the other hand, if you are a caregiver and you are feeling burned out and exhausted and maybe even abused by the person that you care for, it's time to get help regardless of which side of this issue you are on. Don't let it go too long find ways to get help that I'm about to talk about. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. My website is PamelaDWilson.com. On there, a lot of hope, help, support for caregivers, care receivers, my library of articles, my book, my podcast every week, and my blog. So if you are stuck in an abusive caregiving relationship and you're the care receiver, here are some things that you might experience. And if you're the caregiver, see if any of these make sense to you, if you are doing any of these. So again, you're the care receiver. The caregiver may blame his or her behaviors on other circumstances, on other people, or may blame you because you need so much care. Maybe the caregiver minimizes the neglect or the abuse by talking about how stressed and how burned out they are. Maybe as the care receiver, you're isolated because maybe you need transportation from this person. You can't get out of the house. They won't allow anybody else into the house. Maybe it's difficult for you to speak freely to your friends or other family members because all of your activities are monitored. Your phone calls might be monitored. You might use a computer in the house and that person can see who you're sending emails to, what websites you're searching. You may have no privacy. And if you have health issues and you rely on this person to provide your care, are you getting bathed on a regular basis? Are you receiving your medications in a timely manner? Are you being provided good meals? What about the ability to go to a doctor on a regular basis to address your health problems? If any of these are an issue, you might be in an abusive situation, or you might be a caregiver who's abusing unintentionally the person you care for because you are so burned out. Financial reliance can be a big point of abuse because if you're the care receiver and there's money, you may be saying, well, why can't I have a caregiver if you don't want to take care of me? Why can't I have somebody else do this if you're going to be neglectful and abusive? Now, obviously, you can't use those words because that's going to bring more anger into the situation, but that's a valid request, right? So what can you do about all of this? The first thing is you have to tell somebody, like the caregivers who approached me. Now, how do you approach me? On my website, PamelaDWilson.com, there is a contact me button and there's a caregiver survey that you can fill out. And on there, you can tell me anything. Okay, so the first thing to do regarding whether you are the person who is feeling abused and neglected, or if you're a caregiver, you gotta tell somebody to make a report to get some help. And if you are the care receiver, while you might feel embarrassed about this situation, and you don't wanna get your spouse or your family member in trouble, if you're really feeling abused, you need some help, you have to do something. And you shouldn't feel like you've done something to cause this abuse or this neglect. Sometimes that is totally out of your control. So, if your abuser 
doesn't give you any privacy if they monitor your visits and your phone calls and your time on your computer, then you have to find somehow another option to seek help. So if you talk to friends on the phone, and there's a way that you can get a code word, and maybe it's uh, the sun is shining today, to tell them that things are not going well, do that. If you can leave the house, make a phone call from a friend's phone or a neighbor's phone or get one of those burner cell phones that you can use for an emergency that can't be tracked. You can also go to a public place and use a computer, so like a library, computer, a community center, somewhere like that, to send emails and to search for where to get help. So what you want to search for is how can I report abuse, neglect, and exploitation? And pages will come up on the internet. And so I'm going to give you a couple of phone numbers here. So if you can't get out anywhere and you're watching this video, the National Domestic Abuse Hotline is 800-799-7233. 800-799-7233. The National Elder Abuse also has a hotline. It's 800-677-1116. And you might be thinking, well, what if I'm a younger person and I'm not an older person? Call these hotlines, they can probably direct you to a younger adult or child center for elder abuse. Or again, if you search the internet, you can find those numbers. Now, a lot of communities have local numbers. So I'm in Denver, Colorado. If you're here in Denver, city and county of Denver, the number to call is 720-944-4347. So where else do you go for help if you can't get help from these hotlines? So if you're an older adult, the idea is that you have to make a report because there are mandatory abuse laws in many states. Now, this is older adults, 65, 70 years old, right? You make your report to the police who then contacts Adult Protective Services who will make an investigation. So you're probably thinking, well, gosh, if I make this report, the person who cares for me is going to be really angry. So can you make a report anonymously or have a friend or a family member or somebody else make a report for you so that an investigation happens. And what will happen is the police and adult protective services will come to your home. Now, you might be thinking, wow, this is going to cause me a lot more problems. Well, yes and no. It can put the person who's caring for you on notice. And you can say, hey, I have no idea who made this report. I have no idea how this happened. If you have children or friends, do you have the option of moving out of your home and in with them? If you don't have that option and it's serious and you can get out of the house, can you go to a domestic violence center, a women's shelter, a men's shelter to make a report and find ways to get help? They have case managers or staff on site there that helps people in these situations find help. The other thing is if you get out of the home to see a doctor and you can have private time with that doctor without your caregiver in the room, you can ask for that. Make a report to the doctor. Many doctors and healthcare providers are mandatory reporters. If you're a young and disabled person and you feel like you're not getting care from parents or you live in a group home and it's not going well, make a report to your case manager if you're on Medicaid services. Other places to search and ask for help. There are legal services offices in most large cities that do pro bono help. You could call them to see if you can get an attorney to help you out. There are also attorneys who specialize in elder abuse and domestic violence and child abuse. Now you're thinking you may need to have money for this. Well, if you make a report to an attorney, they're a mandatory reporter. If they can't help you, have them make a report for you. The idea is that somehow you've got to start the process to get help so that you are not more seriously abused or harmed or neglected. Now, in some cases, even if you are married and your husband, let's say, is your power of attorney or your wife is your power of attorney, you can ask the court to appoint a guardian or a conservator for you. The names are different by state, but it's the idea of having a person legally appointed to care for you, to manage your health and your well-being and money if money exists in the family. 
So if you're a spouse that hasn't worked and you have none of your money, you have no money, and you're thinking, I can't get out of this because I have no money to pay for my care. Well, the court can order your spouse to set aside money to pay for your care. Or the person who is appointed as your guardian can help you apply for Medicaid to get services through Medicaid. So there are options. And I realize that a lot of this can be super scary, super threatening, whether you are a young person or an old person and you're isolated and maybe you don't have a lot of friends, somehow you have to find the courage to take the next step. Taking it wisely though, so that you're not subjected to more harm from your caregiver. And it can be by making reports to outside people who can help you or have a friend advocate for you or a neighbor to get you help or find an attorney or a domestic violence center. There are people out there who care and will help. The problem is if you're in this situation and you're isolated, you may not know how to find that information. So if you know anybody in this situation, press the share button on this video, follow the videos on my YouTube channel for more hope, help, and support. And I hope that the two individuals out there who asked for this video find some help and some support here. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Again, my website's PamelaDWilson.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you all again soon in another video.